Washington is one of Hollywood's most powerful, magnetic and sexy leading men. A highly skilled actor, his intelligence, courage and strength can be seen in all of the roles he plays, whether it be a socially conscious drama, biopic, comedy or suspense thriller. A gifted actor, his success has done a lot to expand the range of dramatic roles given to African-American actors and actresses. Denzel was born in Mount Vernon, New York in 1954. The son of a Pentecostal minister and a beautician, after graduating from high school, he enrolled in university to pursue a career in journalism. But after performing in student theatre productions, he caught the acting bug and so after graduation, moved to San Francisco where he won a scholarship to study at the American Conservatory Theatre. When I first started acting in college, the first class I took was a Shakespearean uh, sort of acting workshop class. Especially in the States, uh, it's, it's sort of approached with that reverence of, oh yes, this is what acting in theater really is, you know, all of that sort of thing. After studying at the American Conservatory for only one year, Denzel left in search of acting work. With his handsome looks, powerful presence and acting versatility, it wasn't long before he started landing TV roles. His first acting job was on the telly movie Wilma and was particularly significant as it was on set that he met his wife-to-be Pauletta, with whom he now has four children. But his big break came in 1982 on the popular TV hospital drama St Elsewhere, which he starred in for its full six-year run. During this time, Denzel dabbled in film. His breakthrough performance came playing anti-apartheid activist Steve Biko in Richard Attenborough's Cry Freedom, for which he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the 1988 Academy Awards. He didn't win that year, but two years on, he would win the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his superb portrayal of a courageous runaway slave called Trip in the Civil War drama Glory, starring opposite Matthew Broderick and Morgan Freeman. People tell the story that they know, mm -hmm. you know, and I can't necessarily expect uh, uh, whites in Hollywood to know stories of blacks, you know, and even Ed was, was willing to, to, to say, you know, we know the basic history, but mm -hmm. we don't know the inside of the, the culture and mm -hmm. the real, you know, nuts and bolts of it. So that's, you know, where, where like Morgan Freeman and myself, we kind of added those elements to make it more realistic. Winning an Academy Award often has a major impact on an actor's career, but how did it affect Denzel's day-to-day -day life? I still have to put out the garbage every day <laughs> in the house, but uh, it's, it's an honour to know that, that, uh, that uh, your peers recognise your work you know, that you belong to the club, as it were. In 1992, Denzel Washington would play one of his most critically acclaimed roles in Spike Lee's Malcolm X, a part that he'd actually wanted to play ever since he began acting training. His powerful performance as the Black Nationalist leader earned him his third Academy Award nomination. Malcolm X transformed Denzel's career. Not only did he go on to name his son Malcolm, but the role instantly turned him into one of Hollywood's most respected actors. Offers came flooding in, and he even turned down the chance to play Martin Luther King Jr. because he didn't want to be typecast. But taking on such heavy emotional performances also had a negative effect. You know, after, after having done Malcolm X, I really didn't want to make another film because I didn't have any energy. But he found the energy somewhere, and in 1993 appeared in three films. Kenneth Branagh's film adaptation of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, the political thriller The Pelican Brief alongside good friend Julia Roberts, and then he took a big risk when he starred opposite Tom Hanks in the topical Philadelphia, playing the homophobic lawyer of a man dying of AIDS. Those who are the most homophobic or prejudiced or whatever toward gays or toward anyone who has AIDS, they'll probably look at my character and say, yeah, that's right, good, that's right, he's saying what I want to say. I, finally, we have our voice, you know. But I think the, the subtle changes that he makes as the film goes along, at least by the end of the film, they, if, they, if they've stuck with him and they agree with him, then they have to be at, at least as different by the end of the film as he is you know, at least willing to maybe rethink their way of thinking. His thoughtfulness has been a central theme in most of Denzel Washington's role choices, 
And although a lot of his films have centred on stories that challenge people's opinions and views of the world, he also sees the benefit in making movies that simply aim to entertain. A lot of people go to the movies just to, to feel good, to feel happy. So movies that make them feel good and happy are very imp are equally as important. You know, I mean, I'm in the film business. I, I lead somewhat of a luxurious life. So what's important to me is not necessarily important to some guy who's who's hacking away uh, with, a, with a shovel or, or, or cleaning the streets for 12 hours a day. He, he doesn't want to know from hard times when he goes to the movies. He wants to see, you know, the pretty girl or whatever and, 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 and escape. A string of successful entertainment-focused films followed, including Virtuosity, Courage Under Fire and He Got Game, which saw Denzel reunite again with director Spike Lee. He also starred alongside Gene Hackman in the military thriller Crimson Tide, which marked the start of a professional collaboration with director Tony Scott, who would go on to direct many more Denzel films. We know each other. I know how he works, he know how I work. So far, four films, I've had a great time every time with Tony. In 1999, Denzel starred opposite Angelina Jolie, playing a paralysed detective in the thriller The Bone Collector, which gave him a slightly different challenge than what he was used to. I played some challenging uh, individuals and parts in my, in my days, but uh, this is the, the most unique challenge. Definitely physically, I've never had my tools taken away from me, the ability to express and to move and to, and to turn my head. All of those things were frustrating at times. I mean, the, the, the actor's body is his instrument, his tool. So to have 90 whatever, 3% of that, 90 some odd percent of that taken, taken away, uh, you have to sort of act with your soul. Denzel Washington received wide critical acclaim for his next role in The Hurricane. He dug deep, both physically and emotionally, to tell the real-life story of the boxer Reuben Hurricane Carter, who spent 20 years in jail on false triple murder charges. A very physically demanding part, director Norman Jewison challenged Denzel, who worked out for an entire year with a boxing trainer so that he could nail the role. He put me on the spot. You know, he sort of challenged my uh, competitive spirit a little bit, ego, if you will. He says, look, Denzel, you know, you got to get up there in your shorts, and there's nothing I can do, you know, with the camera to help you. I mean, I know you're, you know, you're 44 years old now, and I'm like, look, you just have the film ready. You be ready. I'll be ready. Denzel's discipline and focus paid off, and his standout performance was recognised with awards at the Berlin Film Festival and Golden Globe Awards. I feel good. I won. <laughs> well, you know. Oh. <laughs> Is that what I said? <laughs> well, look. I mean, it, it. Ten years ago, I was I was standing here, in this building, for uh, glory, and uh, it was a good night. It's a good night again, and hopefully, in a couple of months, it'll be another good night. So. Although many believe he unfairly missed out on a second Academy Award for his outstanding work in The Hurricane, he didn't have to wait long. Instead, winning the Best Actor Oscar for 2001's Training Day, in which he played Detective Alonzo Harris opposite an inspired Ethan Hawke. I just loved it. I thought it was a great part for Denzel. I was kind of excited to watch him play a character this complicated. Not only was the character complex, but it was very different for Denzel, as it was one of the first times he was playing a bad guy. And he loved being naughty. It's freer, you know, you can, you can, this, it's, it's sexier. It's, it's like the things you want to do and say, but you, you can't. Now at the top of his acting game, Denzel needed a new challenge. But where to go to from here? Well, for Denzel, it meant stepping behind the camera and directing 2002's Antoine Fisher. Directing really reawakened me. I was really bored with acting. Around 2000 to 1999, I was really ready to do something else. And I did. I tried directing a movie, and then I realized I was crazy for trying that. But I loved it. Back in front of the camera, roles in John Q, Out of Time and Man on Fire followed before Denzel starred opposite screen legend Meryl Streep in 2004's The Manchurian Candidate and she only had good things to say. 
Denzel as an actor brings such size and a sort of broken dignity to this role. I think a lot of the work, you know, that other actors huff and puff to do, he just sort of walks in with it. And it's a great quality. It's star quality. With Denzel's star quality shining as brightly as ever, he once again teamed up with Tony Scott on 2006's Deja Vu, before working with Tony's brother, acclaimed director Ridley Scott, on American Gangster. Denzel then took on his second directorial project, the Oprah Winfrey-produced film The Great Debaters. During the same year, Denzel's career was celebrated, along with Kate Winslet, when they were both honoured with a BAFTA Stanley Kubrick Excellence in Film Award. It's an honour, first of all, to, uh, to be recognised, to be mentioned in the same breath, and to win an award, Stanley Kubrick Award. It's amazing. What role stands out as a favourite or one that? I don't have a favourite. No, I don't, you know, I don't live in the past. I let them go. And uh, uh, what I usually say, my stock answer when people say, what's your favourite film? I say my next one. With a list of big name actors and directors wanting to work with him and many projects being offered to him, Denzel Washington is certainly one of the most successful and respected actors in the world. But this hasn't gone to his head. A spiritual man, he has remained grounded and hates to think of himself as a celebrity. I don't want to go around opening supermarkets and, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, I, I'm called a celebrity, but that's not what I do. I'm an actor, that's what I do. That's what I know how to do. I wouldn't know how to, you know, wave to, I mean, I know how to do that because I've well, done it, but, but I mean, it's just not, I, I never studied to be a celebrity, I studied to be an actor. Whether he's acting or directing, Denzel Washington is a masterful storyteller with the ability to affect an audience, to make them question the way they feel about an issue and to trigger change. An intelligent, handsome and commanding leading man, you can guarantee there'll be plenty more impressive work to come from Denzel Washington. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.